Greetings everyone, I'm Stefan and today we have yet another mechanic to exploit and use to our advantage. That is combat disengagement. As you can see here, we have two fleets, a big enemy fleet and a small fleet of our own. The enemy is going to win this fight, and they're going to cause a lot of losses, but they're not going to destroy our entire fleet. A lot of our ships get disengaged from combat instead, and once the battle is over and the enemy has won, we're going to be given a chance to rebuild and fight another day. Today we're going to be exploring whether using it to its maximum potential, with things like the Trickster Admiral and the Hit and Run War Doctrine, is actually a good thing, or can secretly hurt you in the long run. Let's see. The first thing to know about combat disengagement chance is that it only occurs to ships which are already nearly dead. Specifically, a ship has to be below 50% of its hull points, Specifically hull points, not shields, not armor, hull points. And then, after it gets hit, there's a chance for it to disengage. The chance to disengage does scale depending on the damage dealt. If a ship gets hit by a small weapon, or let's say strike craft, there's a small chance for it to disengage according to the formula. However, if your ship gets hit by a larger weapon, the chance to disengage is proportional to the amount of damage dealt. However, don't take this to mean that it doesn't matter what size weapons are used. What happens with larger weapons, as opposed to smaller weapons, is instead of taking lots of small hits uh, that have lots of various opportunities to disengage the ship, large weapons take big chunks out of enemy hit points, which means that they will not only uh, potentially have less opportunity to disengage uh, when in the disengagement threshold, they can also be potentially just killed in a single shot and not disengage at all. Disengagement only happens after the damage is dealt, and if a ship is destroyed by the damage, no disengagement can happen. Because of this, large weapons such as neutron launchers and X-slot weapons can completely negate disengagement chance by killing the ships outright. Because those weapons are so prevalent in the late game, it means that disengagement isn't really a factor in the late game. It's more of a factor in the early game. And in the early game, it does hold its ground. In fact, it may be more important to cause losses to the enemy than actually win fights with them. If they can be whittled down and uh, you can have more ships in the end, eventually you'll start winning, and eventually you will win the war. This means that increasing combat disengagement chance can only be a good thing, right? Well, not really. The problem with running a high combat disengagement build is that your ships disengage and can no longer contribute to combat. This means that there's a higher likelihood for the fleet to lose battle, and in fact, when I put up two completely identical fleets against each other, one with a Cautious Admiral and one with a Trickster Admiral. The Cautious one won every single time. Interestingly enough, in an even matchup, there tended to be about as many losses on the Trickster side as there were on the Cautious side. As you can see here, the enemy fleet is left at 66 destroyers, and we're left at 69 destroyers. Sure, we caused three more losses to the enemy, but they somehow managed to cause a lot of losses on our end, even though we are a Trickster. The problem becomes obvious when you take a look at the fleet combat log. Overall, we dealt significantly less damage than the enemy did, because the enemy stayed in the fight longer and so were able to inflict losses on all of our ships, while we were able to only damage some of their ships and cause losses there. If you're facing an evenly matched opponent, going for a higher combat disengagement chance is actually a bad idea. You will lose combat and you will not inflict significantly more losses to the enemy. Combat disengagement becomes a lot more useful if you're uh, either weaker than an opponent or stronger than an opponent. If you're weaker than an opponent and are going to lose the fight anyways, uh, taking less losses from their shots is quite useful, and uh, on average you will lose about as many ships as they do if they have 25% more ships than you. Even though you are losing fights, you will be able to whittle down the enemy fleet and cause war exhaustion, so you can potentially status quo and then fight them another day. Alternatively, if you're already superior to an opponent, using hit or run is actually a really good idea because it will minimize the losses you take from their ships. Using the trickster and hit or run combo, you're still able to win against the opponent, but you're taking significantly less losses. In fact, I've done 40 trials of this engagement, 20 with the trickster and 20 with a cautious admiral. In all 40 engagements, we won the battle. However, when I was using the trickster, we took about 33% less losses from the enemy than when I was using the Cautious Admiral. This means that in future engagements, you're able to have even more ships than the enemy, and overall you will take less and less losses the more you fight the enemy. Of course, there are different ways to increase or reduce uh, disengagement, and it's always a good thing to reduce enemy disengagement because 
Increasing your own disengagement causes you to lose out on other bonuses. If we're running hit and run, we cannot use rapid deployment, defensive depth, or no retreat. If we're using a trickster admiral, we can't run cautious, or an engineer, or an unyielding admiral. But if we just slap on a communications jammer on a station, it's going to reduce enemy combat disengagement, cause us to inflict more losses on them, and overall be in a good situation. Alternatively, we could also fight in a black hole. The black holes provide a 50% combat disengagement reduction to all ships uh, within the system. Or potentially, we could increase our own combat disengagement chance for free by fighting in our own home territory. This of course means you're fighting a defensive war, but if you do manage to bait the enemy fleet into your space, you're able to deal significant losses to them and then advance into their territory. However, even the home territory advantage fades away when faced with neutron launchers. Neutron launchers and weapons such as mega cannons and tachyon lancers, they just completely destroy ships. There's no chance to disengage and so therefore, go for disengagement at that point is kind of irrelevant. One final thing to mention about combat disengagement chance is that it is affected by what ship class you use. Corvettes have a 1x uh, ship multiplier for disengagement. Destroyers and cruisers have a 1.5x multiplier. And battleships and titans have a 1.25x. With these numbers, cruisers are the kings of disengagement, and if you slap on some crystal hull plating to increase hull points on them, they're going to be pretty much unkillable. At least until protons come into play. But anyways, that's going to do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's mechanics video, and if you would like to see more of this sort of content, please do like and subscribe. Special thank you to my Patreon supporters, and of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.